Now, back to the Mike Calter Show on 1025 The Bone. Homegrown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road, gotta hit the road. The sun and change in the atmosphere, architecture, I'm familiar. It's I Mike Calter Show, it's 1025 The Bone. Joe Mackey's here. Let me grab some of these phone calls. I want to bring him in the studio. Jose, you're on the Mike Cal the show. Good morning. Good morning, sir. What's happening, buddy? I would like to protest on your game. Thank you. I agree. Why? <laughs> why? Under what conditions, <laughs> sir? Uh, match number one, Spanish served first, and he won set number one, which means in set number two, you should have started serving first instead of Spanish again. Because that gives him the advantage. But that's how, it, that's how it does work on the Wii. We switch serving every time. Yeah, well, this guy's right, and you're wrong. <laughs> thank you, Jose. Gracias, amigo. Dan, good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, I wanted to let you know the way to fix that delay is you got to go to the settings and the TV and put it on game mode. Well, unfortunately, they gave us a TV from 1994 <laughs> to play on, so... We got an 80 inch TV in there, and they made us play on a 42 inch TV. From, from <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think that was 42. Uh, it wasn't even, it was it was not like even 20, a flat screen. 20 something. We played on a tube uh, projection <laughs> TV. Thank you, sir. I mean, you got to admit, that was ridiculous. There was a, a hell of a delay, I will say. You that. can't return a, a ball when you can't time it. Right, right. Listen, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. I did. I won two the out of five, three out of the five. Can you go get our guest, please? Yes. I need you to sit in here and. Tell me what you just did. I mean, once you had an afternoon to practice like Spanish, I think. Thank you, Gio. Oh, there'd be better results. Boy. Gio, I was trying my best to bring you in the studio. I know, man. You've been trying for years. I know. I know what's going on. You know, I can't just move in here and freight train it out, but I understand. Eventually, we'll get it all worked out. Spanish did practice, though. I've got sources. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you practice yesterday? You practice? Hi, Hi Joe. How you guys? How you doing? How you doing? Joe Mackey is here. By the way, still mad at you. Still mad at me. I'm not mad. Like, I'm not mad at you, like, angry. But, I mean, f- the first time you were here, I called you, uh, like, Joe Machi or something. The whole yeah. Time. You didn't c- correct me one time. Well, I don't like to go into another sensei's dojo <laughs> and tell him what's what. <laughs> Smart move, I think. Yeah. yeah. Smart move. Are you in a lot of dojos? Do I look like I'm in a lot of dojos? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, I oh, do. Yes, okay. Need to catch up on a couple of things. You know, keep, like... All right, I'm on the hot seat now. Still dating the mysterious hot girl? I still am. Still refuse to show anybody a picture of her? Still refuse. Okay. I even asked a couple other comedians about it, and they're like, oh, no, he's super protective over her. Super protect-. And I was like, super ugly, right? Hey, and they were like, no, just the opposite. She is protective of me not talking about her publicly. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And I have to de- – if I say something on Calta, obviously, it yeah, gets out there. It does. The show's got power. Worldwide. Yeah, I know, I know. And – uh and she had a real job too. I can't she has remember. A real, she works in finance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, nice. I get it. She doesn't want to be. She doesn't want to be mixed up in your clown world. Yeah, right? I mean my world of scoundrels. Right, right. right morning right. radio. Mm-hmm. Heck, I walk in the door. This guy's in short shorts and a. <laughs> I know. And we're a doing, t-shirt. We're doing, wacky, Sorry, no. we're doing wacky morning radio stunt today. So, uh, I have a question for you. I have a friend of mine. Guy grew up in New York. Okay. Who is a cab driver, and swears to God that you fell out of his cab once. That could. That could be. Is that real? I don't think so, but... He said you and another comedian were in the car together, and at one point you dove out of the car. I don't remember diving out of a cab. I remember I had to throw up in... in this is this is a great story <laughs> for morning radio. Perfect. I had to puke, and I I quickly jumped out of a cab. Maybe that was it. That, that could have been it. Yeah, was the cab fully stopped? Uh, it was it was slow. It was very, it was almost stopped. <laughs> and that and that's not the first thing that comes to your head when I bring that up. Look, I'm like an '80s action hero. Okay, <laughs> I just walk around doing crazy stuff all so it's the hard time. To keep track I'm of in that. dojos constantly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. It was uh, Sam Morell who told us that. Oh, you Sam were, Morell. Yeah. You well, jumped out. You know, I. I uh, should have known you were lying when you said you had a friend. Oh, <laughs> burn. Oh, that's it. Get out. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Joe, how are things going? Man, think for me? Yes. Things are going great. I, I mean, don't obviously. think so. I, want, I don't know why there is not a TV show with you already. Like, I, like a Netflix show, not even on TV, because you're so 
awesomely weird. You realize you're the you're in my mind, although way funnier. You have the qualities of a Tiny Tim, or a it's somebody like that. You like the guy's hilarious, and there's just something weird about him. You know what it is? I think it's it's like someone who is so hot and they take a picture of themselves with their shirt off right and people say you're body shaming me uh, now you put you put me on tv people are like well i'm just not down. as cool as him right, right, right. and they feel bad about themselves that's why they like reality tv right you're people right. are idiots i feel smart <laughs> <laughs> very well put what what city loves you the most i'll tell you what city hates me the most first oh, philadelphia better. Really? Why? I went on their morning radio show right Passion after they and signed. Steve? Yes. Okay. And those guys are great. Yeah. I, I like them. I may have made a, a disparaging reference to signing Bryce Harper to a thirty million dollar a year contract, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the hate poured in from the city of brotherly love. I bet. I if those guys don't care. They'd curse out their own mother in Philadelphia. Yeah, they would. Yeah. They. They, they are the only person to ever get ahead uh, in Philadelphia is Bill Burr. Everybody else. <laughs> And he got ahead by screaming at screaming them, at them. Mm-hmm. they had back Yeah, sets. yeah. <laughs> That's my number one takeaway from the whole thing. That and the fact that uh, uh, who who is the fighter? Frazier, Joe Frazier. No statue. No statue. But they put a statue to a fake buck <laughs> <That's right, laughs> over yeah. here before they put a statue to Joe Frazier. <laughs> uh, Joe is in town. He's going to be at Side Splitters this weekend, and he will be there uh, tonight, eight and ten fifteen. Saturday, six, eight, and ten. Oh man, the dreaded, the, the dreaded, dreaded triple early show. show. Yeah. Some people stay for all three. No, <laughs> that's not true. No, no, no. And then Sunday at no. seven o'clock. Um, Joe is very funny and very weird at the same time. So if you've not seen him and you're hearing him for the first time, is exactly what you get. Imagine a guy who's really comfortable in a hot tub because he kept his shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who else do you hang out with besides Sam Morell? I hang out with uh, Phil Hanley, who's coming to Side Splitters soon. I don't know him. Is he tell tell me about Phil? Because maybe I'll have him on the show if he comes with your recommendation. But be careful, you don't do a Bert Kreischer or Bob Biggerstaff on us. Phil Hanley is Canadian. Build a wall. Um, he <laughs> <laughs> he what? We, he he is taking our jobs. Um, uh-huh. He's actually really clever. He was just on. The Tonight Show uh, last uh, this this past Monday. Okay, how did really he do? Did he kill like he, everybody says? Ah, uh, he did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he did not kill. He did all right. Uh, it's hard for me to, to look at another comedian and say they kill because yeah. I kill so hard. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I understand. And when they it's different you, levels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a handsome fellow with that beard. Yeah, he's he's got a good beard. People okay, with beards. They think they're so great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't shaved. I didn't shave yesterday or today, and I've got a nice little. Uh, what? It looks like there's dirt on my face <laughs> around underneath my chin. Just your chin. <laughs> yeah. Just it's your pretty, chin. It's pretty pathetic. I would love to see what you look like with a full-on beard and longer hair. I can't really grow. If it's really patchy. Yeah, me too. I, that's why I'm more terrified of being stranded on a desert island, because if they rescued me, they would they would just be. That is sad. <laughs> that is a sad beard. They can't, if you died, then they found you the next day. They wouldn't be able to tell how long you were there by your beard. Right. This side says three years. This side says 42 days. Did he just make marks on a rock? Yeah. Like yeah. he was counting days? What, what's going on over here? Uh, what about um, you hang out with, uh, uh, what's his name? Mark Norman? I hang out with Mark Norman sometimes. I was just with him in uh, in Ireland last weekend. Oh, you were with I- you were with Mark in Ireland, Doc, uh, because I know you were with Bert Kreitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark was with Bert, and uh, we were out there, and he, uh, he's, boy, the ladies love that guy, huh? Uh. I, you know, it's hard for me to compare. It's almost like comedy. Yeah, yeah. The ladies love me. I, I mean, and it's so difficult for you. It, it's like ladies love cool. Where do you meet your girlfriend that you're not allowed to talk about? Uh, I met her at a comedy show. Obviously. Your show? Yes. And yes, she liked you, and came up to you afterwards. Yeah. And she <laughs> 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 happens all the time. And she says, "Hi, Joe." She said hi, and I was actually talking to the band The Offspring. I like that. They were at the show in New York City. Noodles and the other guy? Noodles, uh, uh, man, they got Dexter. a lot of good songs. Um, okay, so you're talking to Offspring. And, and I said, hey, guys, I'll be right back. Uh-huh. And I went up and said, thanks for coming to the show. To your girlfriend? Uh, to your, my now girlfriend, then right. just a stranger. You saw her and you were like, <laughs> if I I want to talk to her so much that I will leave Offspring yeah. to go and give it a shot. You couldn't keep us separated. Oh, uh, right, wow. Right. I 
I got it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you go up to her and you say, uh, I said, thanks for coming to the show. I hope you enjoyed it. And she said, I did. And then she wrote me on Facebook. And said what? Now, let's, were you. Let's hang out sometime. Were you trying to make the move on her? Were you like trying to. Because I've done that. I've said to a girl, hey, thanks for coming to the gig. And they're always like, do you thank all the girls that come to the gig? And I go, no, clearly not. I'm just trying to hit on you. I thank all the girls that come to the gig, but I don't make a special trip. Gotcha. For, okay. for, I don't leave the offspring. To go over. Yeah. <laughs> Say, so you left the offspring, and, you, and then she hit you up on Facebook, and she was like, hey. Let's hang out sometime. Let's hang out. We went to we met at a bar a couple days later. Uh-huh. Now let's be honest. Does that hap- did that happen a lot? Before not that? to me. I think you have to put out a vibe. Right. You're not a vibe kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm. What is the level of girl that you're pulling out of the club before your wife or girlfriend? Sorry. Uh, I I really never did it. Really? Yeah. I was just never. A, you have to put out a vibe, and you have to be like a. I think people know instinctively that I am not. A, a player but some girls like that they Maybe. like to be in control and uh, you can't <laughs> control this it's like trying to <laughs> it's like trying to tame the rapids i understand <laughs> i understand okay so uh you go to a bar a couple of days later yeah and obviously i'm very very funny i'm very charming were you sweating it out were you like i don't meet the strange girl i was sweating because it was summertime uh-huh, and uh-huh. You, if you wait for this if you miss a subway in manhattan you're underground in 90 degree humidity heat with air isn't moving. It's true. And it smells. Yeah, it smells bad. There's weird. There's bags of garbage. Yeah. People live there. It's just not a great and scene. Then, and then uh, when you walk into the bar and you sit down, what's the uncomfortable conversation like? So, oh, uh, you know, I think we just. That's the nice thing about being a comedian because I was never good at talking to the ladies, but a lot of the work is done for you because they. It's almost like they read your. Yeah, I know about you yeah. already. Okay. All right. So, and then uh, how long do you make sweet love? Oh, I don't talk about that stuff. Yeah. Just, just how long? Like, were you, were you, is it like a... Uh, <laughs> just repeat the question. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm, I just, you, I almost, mean, you almost had me there. <laughs> I was like, wow. I don't mean to, I should I don't answer need to it know again. details. I mean, like, uh, were you together for a while? Did you date for a while? Well, we dated for a while, and then, and then she dropped the, are we... Boyfriend and girlfriend okay, thing on right, me. Right. That's oh. what I want to know. That's I'm not really asking that's, about the sex. I yeah, want to know that's about that. that's the thing. They they get you with that. Yeah, yeah. and then what do you say? I don't know. What do you want? Well, if they ask, the answer better be yes, oh, or it's yeah, gonna yeah. be there's gonna be trouble. Okay, so you're locked in at that. That's point. That's one of those. Do I look fat in this right, questions? Right, right, right. Do you say no? Do you know what I say? What do yeah, you say? I, I say yes. Here's why. Can okay. I tell you why? So, and this goes back years and years ago. My wife was looking for a dress for an event, and she came downstairs. And she's like, how does this look? And it looked awful on her. And her mother was there, and her mother was like, it looks beautiful. You look That's how my, how my mother talks. You look very nice. You look beautiful. And I was like, mm. And then when her mother left, I was like, I got to be honest with you, it wasn't the most flattering thing you ever wore. And my wife's hot. She's not the best. But I'm like, that's not, it didn't work. And she's like, I didn't like it either. And I said, yes. Now she knows that I will always tell her the truth. Oh. I, built, I built that solid trust. That's the difference between you and I. Right, you're I a am a liar. <laughs> I am a dirty <laughs> Filthy uh, scoundrel. I could be a spy if they, st- instead of going for the the debonair, right, cool guy, right, we start which going with that, like kind of wacky, yeah. yeah, maybe a wackier spy. Uh-huh. What were you? What <laughs> were you like in high school? Very much like this. I was a rebel who played by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you I, get beat up, or did you hang out in a certain clique of people like you? I was a quiet kid who was kind of a, a weird dork. Yeah, I, I was very a, believable. Yeah, I wasn't a nerd. I would imagine you se. drew like your own little cartoon strip. I I, I did draw a little bit of, of cartoon strips, <laughs> yeah. um, but you know I was. That's what's frustrating about now because being a nerd is kind of in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you beat the you beat the curve. I've never watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, and that's why I'm uncool. Right, now. <laughs> right, right. Where You're were they? The where dress. were they during Highlander? <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, <laughs> and Xena Warrior Princess. Yeah. Right, it's right. infuriating that right. this is. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, hello, Johnny, come lately. I yeah, would imagine that swords are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you and your circle shared one Playboy. Oh no, good lord. Oh no. Those were tough well, to come young. by back then. Yeah. You're I, young. You probably had full on uh internet porn by the time you needed it. Oh, you know, I I was born in seventy nine, so I am oh, pretty yeah. young. But yeah. uh a, a buddy of mine was uh a friend of mine owned apartment dad owned apartment buildings and they cleaned 
out some dude, I think he got evicted or he moved out suddenly. Right. And they found all these really, really gross magazines. Like, not just conventional stuff. But right, 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 like German the, stuff. The worst thing you can think of yeah, they yeah, found. Yeah. And what he did was he, he took them all home, and he would peel out pages and stuff them in people's lockers <laughs> and like i would i would get to school in the morning and he'd be hanging out by my locker i'd open the locker door and out would pour <laughs> this really filthy magazine and he'd be like joe what are you doing with that <laughs> See, that's but cool. he left them in this chest uh-huh. but he, he his mom always would look for drugs there right and she found them <laughs> and she put them all over <laughs> all over the kitchen table so he came home from school oh, and she found oh, all these oh. magazines and there's no nothing you're gonna say that's gonna get you out of that one you, what you do you can, do if you're like i have kids i would never do that like i like oh my god i don't think i'd ever be even now at this age would have ever gotten over my mother laying my porn out on a table and having to deal with that i would never do that to my kids especially if it's your practical joke pornography (laughs) (laughs) german fister and all that other stuff yeah i don't need any of that (laughs) although i did one time i tried to hide my vhs porn in the most obvious spot because nobody ever really used a vhs in the house except for me and I, we had a basket of videos, and I just threw it in the basket of videos so it would be convenient. I would be able to grab it whenever I wanted Hiding to. Hiding in plain sight. Pretty it's much. It's one of the tricks they teach you in spy school. Right, right, right. And uh, except my mom was looking for a video one time, and she went through the videos. And she came and she, uh, I came home, and she was like, so I was looking for the video when we were in California. And I go, oh, man, I bet you didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> but I did find one with uh, uh, impressive-looking black women. I said, yep, that's mine. Yeah, and that was the name of it too. Impressive uh, black woman. Yeah, really uh, tasteful uh, name. <laughs> right. This was before the Me Too. I was ahead of the, ahead of the curve. Uh, this is comedian Joe Mackey, who is uh, going to be at Side Splitters all weekend long. Now, what will you do while you're in town? Are you a, are you a guy who holds up in his hotel room, or do you like to see the joint? I like to see the joint. Last time I went to the beach at uh, Clearwater, probably you to did? go. For, yeah, that's not what I would have guessed. Well, yeah, with this body, yeah, mm-hmm. keep me away from shirt the beach. on body guy. <laughs> yeah, shirt. Yeah. Keep the shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll go to the beach. Who do you hang out with? Like you, you just get an Uber to the beach. I have a brother that lives in Florida. He's gonna come up and then. Uh, What's he like? Is he opposite of you, or are you just two of the two similar dudes? Well, he, he's the oldest. I'm the youngest. I think the older, the the oldest are usually the the most confident, right? And the youngest are the quirkiest because. It's all been done by the time the youngest gets around there, True. and the, it, it's just. Uh, what does he do for a living? He works at, uh, as a uh, for a news station. Oh, yeah. So uh, he's in the, he's in this business. Yeah. So you're both kind of successful and in the public eye. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Your parents must be proud. Yeah, of course they are. Well, they probably don't get you though. They probably understand. Why can't you be like your brother? You well, my dad's be- eighty now, so yeah. There's a lot of generation gap, right. and then, you know, that was the generation that didn't really show emotion. My grandfather and my grandmother are still alive. They're in their 90s. Wow. And my grandmother is sick and she wasn't eating, so somebody suggested that perhaps the doctor could prescribe her some sort of marijuana to get her appetite going. Okay. And my grandfather said, and I quote, we won't have that dope in our house. And I thought, that's that's an age thing. So I bet you run into a lot of that with your dad. Yeah, sometime, someday we'll... We'll get those people in jail. <laughs> Wait a second. So your dad doesn't show you, emo- never say I love you kind of guy? They, they they have that two emotions, frustration and rage. Yeah, And, yeah, and yeah. maybe disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> so were they, when you said, uh, I'm going to be a comedian, were they like, oh, Joe's, uh, Joe's that, gay? That quiet <laughs> yeah. roll of the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But I think that they, like, I worked full time. Right. While until, you were doing it? Yeah. Okay. So I had a real job. It's just that uh, I did it nights and weekends. Where a lot of people they're they're moving furniture yeah. or they're wa- working at restaurants where you have to work when you should be doing comedy. Oh yeah. I just went without sleep. That was my, that was my Oof. strategy. What about uh, when you're on TV? Are your parents like, well, there's little Joe on TV? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, watch all the time. They're cool. very supportive. Now you just have to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> say, that will shut up all the all the critics. The naysayers. Yeah. <laughs> How about when you're a robot comic on Crashing? Remember that? That was that so was, good. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. I love that show. It was it was good. Too bad that they, I, I, I don't know if they canceled it, it or if they ended it, but it's, either it's way, over. I think it ran its course. Three seasons was perfect. I think that's a good good amount for any TV show for the yeah, most part. Yeah, like it, it it didn't need to. We didn't need to follow it any more than where it was. But I thought it was, he was very becoming good. successful. So exactly. right. it didn't. The struggle is is different. Right, so. and I thought that was perfect. Uh, and I thought it gave a nice um, light to you guys who are working the comedy cellar. And and it, people don't like. I would imagine people that don't really get it think that you guys are. Uh, super highly paid, 
and you'll do the one market this week, one market that week, and they don't really know that while you're home, you're putting in avails in all these clubs, and you're running from one club to another in the same night, and that's a that's a pain in the ass that never goes away. It used to be you did one Tonight Show and you were a headliner too, and oh, now yeah. it's it's the media so fragmented that it's hard to get a fan base like you used to. Yeah. Also, I mean, if you want to be depressed, type in your own name and then net worth. <laughs> <laughs> and think what the internet thinks, how much money you have, Let's and how woefully Joe inadequate. Okay. I'm going to say Joe Mackey. I'm going to say $250,000. Oh, I say way less. You think? <laughs> <clears throat> Not that it's true, but I say the internet says Joe is at one one fifty. And do you know what it is, Joe, or no? I know what... What what it what it what it was when last time I checked it, and I know what my actual net worth is, and it's way less. Uh, this says Joe Mackey net worth, one point four million dollars. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, it's gone way up. Yeah, yeah I like that. Last time it was seven hundred thousand, and it was way less than wow. that. Yeah. And now, where do you think they get these numbers from? I have no idea. Maybe I spend too much and did they you, get my credit. Did you win any contests? No. Yeah, so they can't say, well, Joe won last comic standing, so he gets at least this much money. Or Joe's been on this TV show for this long. And even when you win those things, it's usually paid out over 30 years decades. or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's ridiculous. I would like to point out, so they have the uh, people also search for Joe Mackey Fox. So maybe on Fox TV or something. Or or maybe Joe Mackey is a fox. Yeah, <laughs> that's possible. Uh, Joe Mackey Instagram. Also, uh, comedian Joe Mackey, female. Oh, How you like that? That, that old thing again. Look, Look at that. Yeah, I Look see at that. that. See that growth? That's, is that growth? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. It shows that the hormones are finally kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going through puberty now. You do have like, a, a uh, like Carmen, who's not here today. She's out sick. She has a boyfriend who happens to be a comic who looks very much like a woman. He looks like a like a tall, pretty woman. Am I right? Am I? You know who he is. Yeah, right? He looks like a lady, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you do have ladylike qualities at times. Not in feminine, but you do. No, I, I, maybe ladies are childlike. <laughs> I, I, I want to know where this is going. <laughs> I was wondering if you want a hug. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, uh, yes. Uh, childlike features. You could play a kid in one of those movies where, like, I'm, but I'm a kid and I'm a man's body. I could play Peter Pan. You could. I don't know why those jobs always go to women. <laughs> <laughs> I can play Peter Pan. We can't get Peter off the ground. What are we doing here? Uh, hey, I've lost a little bit of weight. No, you look good. I'm just saying you're not going to fly over the kids. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they're going to have to get some good piano wire for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so so you and your brother will go to the beach together. Yeah, i probably hit the beach. Uh-huh. Yep, if you guys want to see my hot sleeve, sleeveless arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we're I don't know how we switched from like men wearing shirts when they went in swimsuits, those like the full on stripe yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, those were nice. I like a little one piece. I, I was better off with that. Bring a little it back. A little Bring it back. Yeah, I mean, I have to shop for wrestling singlets. <laughs> what do you wear now? What is your beach attire? I just wear a t shirt and, and a full on t shirt in the water. Like if you go in the usually water, usually I'll take it off for the water, but yeah. I, I used to leave it on because you know, why get, why get sunburned? Uh, I'm a tank top guy. You're tank top guy? And it has nothing to do with the sun. It's just because I'm fat. And I'm not really, I'm not embarrassed. I don't want to, I don't want to put other people in uncomfortable situations. I don't want them to pretend that they don't notice. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I get what you're yeah. saying. So, uh, I think we look good though. I don't care. I'm the most comfortable fat guy you'll ever meet. I'll, I'll flop out in my pool. The other day I fell asleep on the lounge chair outside in my pool. And I was like, man, I'm right under my neighbor's window. This could be the worst video on Instagram that you'll ever <laughs> see. Because I would do that to somebody else. And then uh, nothing yet. So I'll that, back. That, is a, that is a thing that bothers me. When people film strangers who aren't doing anything wrong, they just... It's a new way of bullying strangers. Really. <laughs> yeah. Some deserve it, though. Like, like, we got a video of a woman who... Oh. A listener sent it to me. She's walking in a store, and she stops, and she reaches down and scratches her crotch and then pulled up and smells her hand and walked in i was like i can't not put that on instagram well if you're doing something gross yeah that's yeah. one thing but if you're just going about your day and you're weird yeah like there was a dude at mcdonald's who looked like abraham lincoln <laughs> <laughs> and i saw people just going by laughing and taking a picture and i'm like first of all he looks like abraham lincoln <laughs> The greatest president <laughs> in the history of the country. And you're just taking pictures to put on Instagram so there, people like you. There's an Apple store here uh -huh. in the mall. And I know people are listening. They're like, oh, my God, I know that guy. I went in there one time, and there's a guy in there using the computer that looks like George Washington. And he was wearing a green and red Freddy Krueger 
type sweatshirt or sweater. So I took his picture and I go, George Washington Kruger is here in the Apple store. And I put it up. This is like years ago. Uh-huh. And every time I go to the Apple store, dude is in there every time. And he's clean and he doesn't look homeless or anything. So I asked one of the Apple guys, I'm like, what's up with George Washington Kruger? And they're like, oh, that's a uh, Clark. He's in here all the time. I go, and nobody cares. They're like, why would we care? He's just using the computer and. I'm like, all right, I get and, yeah, uh, and he looks presidential. He's figured out the system. Why buy a computer when you just, <laughs> yeah. they're, just <laughs> they're just free at the store. That's true. Do you ever think it was weird that, that I thought a sweater was a weird choice for Freddy Krueger? Yeah. I, well, you know, where they live. Well, I guess he lives in the California. boiler room. Yeah. Is, it, is it chilly down there? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I think Freddie made a lot of bad choices, really. I guess started, so. Started with the sweater. Uh Joe is gonna be at side sweaters this weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can make reservations nine. 960-1197. What's the uh, what's the competition like in town? I don't I don't know who else is here. I think is that they've you all been. Or me? I just I just had a coffee you burp. Did. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, I didn't see a button to push. No, no, I don't. I like to hear it. I, I can just, just curse at will on this station. No, 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 no. I got. <laughs> look, look at my big button. Can you see it? No, I'll tell you. Oh wow, that is a big button. Yeah. Uh, Joe just said the F word. That's the kind of button you would launch a nuclear weapon with. Oh, I know. This guy uh, is said he, would you fight another comedian? Uh, <laughs> with if they body? wanted to get, if they wanted to get beat up. <laughs> this guy said he would fight you for market dominance. Oh, who, can I see the name? Oh. Who would you be afraid of and who would you, would you be confident with? No one and everyone. <laughs> uh, former UFC fighter Brendan Schaub is here. Okay, yeah. I'm going to let Brendan have this. <laughs> this You win this round, this Schaub. Shabby. Uh, but yeah, don't no. cross Dale Mayberry. <laughs> <laughs> Way to hold on to a logo reference. Also, don't take anything I said about willing to fight comedians, literally. <laughs> Would you? So what are you saying? He's not a good comedian. No, he might be that, a very good comedian. I just won't fight. I won't fight. I'm kidding, I don't even kidding. like UFC. You don't. Why does the cage have to be an octagon? Because I don't know. What they made it, it different. They yeah. made it different than the boxing ring, the square. So they made it a octagon. That's your bad point. The shape. No, I don't like it because it seems. They talk about how great every fighter is at all these different disciplines, and I'm sure they are. Right. I'm sure they're the best at what they do. But so many fights just end up with one guy on top of the other guy going, like, punching down on them really fast. <laughs> and, somebody, <laughs> like, and somebody's stopping. It yeah. looks like every, all of the worst bar fights I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm just, like, and, and like, I, st- I try to stop the bar fight before the referee stops the UFC fight. <laughs> the guy's clearly unconscious, and the other guy is still going, p- punching him right in the face as hard as you can. Oh, you know what? That is the difference between you and I. I want to see the bad stuff. You seem like you're genuinely a good guy. I get you no. You would pl- stop a bar. I get no pleasure out of the world being horrible. <laughs> Do you know I, when they were I coming? Thrive on it. When they were coming up with the idea for the octagon, uh huh. So they came up with the octagon, and they were going to have a moat around it with alligators in it. Really? That would yeah. be great. They that, talked about doing that. That as a fan of moats, <laughs> <laughs> you've whetted my interest. Yeah. <laughs> now you're back in. Uh, yeah. I like you. Uh, uh, I would love. I would love. We we really could bring back the moat. Yeah. The moat should. would be the most effective. The moat would be the most effective home security system ever. Florida is a, is a great state for moats. You pretty much already have them. Right. You just you just dig a canal. <laughs> just add from, water from the swamp and the alley. They'll just. They go in there anyway during mating season. They'll oh, just yeah. trust me. I I got a big one living in my backyard. <laughs> really? Yeah. Dig down a foot, you have water. Yeah, that's true. I could fill my moat just from digging. Yeah. yeah. Do you bury your dead above ground in Florida? No, like in no. New we can we can go. We're not above. Uh, we're, we're not uh, above below sea level, so we can do that. Okay, the water yeah. table's not too high. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it depends on where you are. I said dig a foot, but you know. Depends I know what on you where mean. You yeah. If you you can't, that's why we can't have. You basement. liar! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only liar. <laughs> That was good. Yeah. <laughs> You're learning. <laughs> what do you got? What? Well, tell me some uh, future stuff for you. What do we got, Work? Uh, Specials, I, anything you need to know about? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, I'm going to tape an hour, but Amy Schumer's producing it, and she just... Oh, Amy Schumer Presents? Uh, yep. Uh, she just uh, brought a life into the world, so that. she is occupied. Yeah. So hopefully... So now you just now you got to wait until she's done with... Until she gets annoyed with the kid to come back to you. Yeah, yeah. How'd that conversation go? Was she like, was she like, Joe, I like you. I'm gonna help you with a special, or was Sam like, I could probably get Amy to do it one for you too. She, she, she reached out to me. She did. Yeah. What did yeah. she say? Uh, 
like, uh, how would you feel about producing me producing an hour in exchange for writing jokes for me? No, no, okay. she, no quid pro quo. Amy uh, writes her own stuff, and she writes. I don't know. I like Amy. I I'm do not too. knocking her. I'm just. I'm curious to see how that process. Oh out. no, she. There's no. I mean, so I, I hope that she would. A lady comedian who strikes gold does uh, great stuff for women comedian and helps men comedians. Yeah, she's pr- produced a lot of specials. Yeah. I mean, she produced Rachel Feinstein's special. Yeah, well, what, what I'm saying is, is that it's very rare that you find somebody who finds success and then is willing to help her people. And uh, I think that's great that she does that. That's true. I won't help anybody. Yeah, I'm I try to hurt. Com- I try to hurt other comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, after a comedian said, I'm like, ooh, George Carlin did that bit in yeah. the '90s. Yeah, he didn't do that. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> I just got them to drop a good joke. <laughs> They're so gullible. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Who do you? Uh, who's your favorite comedian to watch? Oh, Norm Macdonald. Not even close. Really? Yeah. Oh man, him These bombing. Both weird. Him bombing is funnier than yeah. any comedian killing, and him killing is still yeah. amazing. He he was in here one time, and I was I told him I said I was actually nervous to have you on the show. I don't get nervous to anybody in the world. And he's like, why? And I go, I because I like you, and you're so goddamn weird that I didn't want I didn't know how it was gonna go. But he's he's great. Oh, he's so funny and so original and uh, fearless. He doesn't doesn't care. Doesn't care. I oh. wish that. Like sometimes when I'm when it's not going well, I I wish I could separate myself from how bad that feels. Right. <laughs> but you you I can't. When's I the can't. last time you really bombed? Um, I did a show at the Comedy Cellar, and just the audience wasn't into it for the first half. Right. They did start to come around. I did. It started at six o'clock just last week. Uh-huh. I did an hour, and uh, you know, that first half hour was pretty pretty rough. Yeah. And I used to like you know, they're just not responding to you the way you hoped, or you're like, man, these jokes are not as good as I thought. It's quiet. Yeah. Oh, and really? And it's just, it, and I used to, my used to start to sweat. My face used to get red, and now I'm used to it. I'm comfortable enough with with failure right. <laughs> <laughs> that, it, that I'm okay with it. Yeah. But I can't thrive like like if you can thrive in that situation, yeah, then you're, then you're that okay. is fun. Yeah. Uh, Joe Mackey is a very funny comedian, and uh, he's the right amount of weird and very funny. And Pretty easy not, on the eye, too. Yeah, uh, very easy on the eye. In fact, don't Especially be intimidated. Yeah, yeah, don't be intimidated by his good looks, gentlemen. Will you shave before the shows? Probably. Don't probably. Sca- I don't want to don't look like Wolfman Jack out there. Yeah, you don't want to have that. Great, Full moon. Great 70s reference. Uh, tonight, 8 and 10, 15. Saturday, 6, 8 and 10, 30. And Sunday at 7 o'clock. Nine six zero eleven ninety seven. Go see Joe, and then uh, go see Joe before you could be like I before his hour special became a huge smash, and then he never comes back to Tampa again. Nope, I will. I won't abandon you, Tampa. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're on tape now. I have yeah. it on tape. You and neither will the Rays. <laughs> oh, please, <laughs> Joe. Thank you. Great thank, to see you. Thank you. Great. I appreciate you. Let me uh, come on. I, I like having you here. Oh. I ran into you at the Comedy Cellar one time, and you remembered me, and that was nice. Yeah, and last time I was here, Bert, Bert called in. Oh yeah, yeah. Bert's in. Well, he's in New York right now. He was just at the Comedy Cellar. Yeah, they're the other taping night. that uh, that his TV show, and then he goes to Australia. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you go overseas and tour anywhere? I have done. Uh, uh, I've done a whole bunch of shows. I I, just, I did the uh, last summer. I did uh, China. Oh, how I was did, that? I did two weeks there and in Singapore. It was, With who? Uh, by myself, there was a, a an Australian expat who books right. comedi- English speaking comedians. Yeah, that's what Bird said. He was going to Singapore. Yeah, great shows. Okay, so and what is the audience like? Are they are they Americans? Are they are they Europeans? Or are they Chinese people? A lot of foreign expats that speak English. So there might be Europeans. A lot of them speak English, and then uh, Indians and. In China, they teach a lot of English in the schools, right. so, so they get some it. speak English well enough to get it, and it's cool to be at the ground floor of, of, of where stand-up is, is brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Bill Haley and the Comets playing. <laughs> and, and Rock and roll yeah. before the Foo Fighters. We did a show in Hangzhou. It's near Shanghai. Right. And I th- it was the first comedy show that anyone even heard of. Really? Yeah, it was the, it was the first time they did one there. And so it you was, can't, it can't, well, the confidence level's got to be an all-time high. I still bombed. Yeah. By, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was still the best set anyone ever had there. I'm mm-hmm. going to Japan next month, and I want to go to see comedy there. Like, I want to go see somebody who can do it like that, like to, to English and Japanese-speaking people. Oh, I know that there's uh, English expats, there, English-speaking yeah. expats doing it there, because I've heard of some shows that, that, that are there, but... Uh, 
Oh, I'm sure so, you'll be able to find it. It's so interesting to me when you guys go to non English speaking, predominantly non English speaking, I would be crapping my pants all the way over. I'm like, they're not going to get these jokes, these references. You don't want to do that in China because a lot of the. They'll shoot you right outside. Yeah, they. Uh, well, it's a police state where you don't see the cops. Right, right. Because no one messes. You just don't. You just don't mess around. You don't mess yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. Much less of a police state here in Florida. Yep. Keep your shirt on. I guess I'm the law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, go see Joe at Sidesplitters this weekend. Sidesplitterscomedy.com. We'll take a quick break. It's the Mike Calter Show. The Mike Calter Show on 1025 The Bone.